Hi everyone, I'm here with uh, Tabish Khan um, and we're going to just discuss my new Kickstarter campaign which is called Animal in You. Um, so hi Tabish, thank you so much for being here with me. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, so hi, I'm Tabish Khan. I'm an art critic, um, the visual arts editor of a Londonist, but I also write for various outlets um, and I also talk about art and I'm also a trustee of a not-for-profit artist organisation called ArtCan and I am looking forward to discussing the work with Jessica and seeing what she's produced. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'll start by just kind of introducing the project. So it's going to be called Animal in You and basically it's it's all around, it's all kind of starts with an ink blot, which to me, you know, ink blots are kind of the icons of psychoanalysis. And I don't know if you know my past work, but a lot of my work has to do with kind of the mind, how we think, um, you know, unconscious desires and dreams and symbolism and all that kind of stuff. And subjectivity as well, especially. Um, which is why I really love the ink blots because everyone who looks at an ink blot will see something different, mm -hmm. even if it's the same ink blot, right? Um, so I just I love this about it. And so what I've been doing, um, the project actually it started off as Animal in Me, and um, it was it was I was going through like quite a lot of emotional stuff uh, in my life and. I was using the ink blots as a kind of therapeutic tool to um, kind of overcome what I called my animal mind, which is basically like this kind of cycle of kind of negative thinking and you know you know how it goes when you when you get into that kind of cycle. And um, by doing these paintings and really focusing on on the things I was seeing in them and just allowing my kind of subconscious mind to just kind of flow. Um, it just really kind of helped me to relax. You know, it, it just became a really therapeutic kind of healing tool for me. And um, shortly afterwards, I got invited to do a residency at Great Art in Hoxton, um, where I could give a workshop to the public, which was really awesome. Um, you know, we had like, we had people making their own ink blots and then talking about what we saw in them. And then they would like kind of paint out what they saw. So there were a lot of kind of, you know, I was doing a lot of animals yeah. because that's what I see a lot of, a lot of horns and a lot of kind of goats and things like that. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I started kind of creating the ink blots and then asking other people what they saw. And then based on what they saw, I would give them a little kind of animal animal spirit guide kind of interpretation of like, you know, the animal symbolism in what they were seeing and the meanings behind uh, the animals they were seeing. Um, and it just became, it was just really fun. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, so I decided to do a, um, I, want, I, wanted to, I wanted to create a project that involved other people. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, like it's it's not just you. It's not just the, the 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 viewer or the participant looking at it and telling me what they see. Um, but I'm also involved in that process. So, for example, if I look at this ink blot, you know, I could see something in it. So this is how it starts, actually. So I use raw canvas because it enables me to fold it over to actually create the ink blot. Right. And then I spend quite a bit of time actually looking at it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a few days to actually see something in it. Um, and it can change, you know, from day to day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so what I like about this project is that I show someone an ink blot like this. So each person will have their own unique ink blot. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of tell me what they see in it. And then because I already have my own kind of preconceived ideas about what I see, yeah. it becomes like a weird trick of the mind where I have to kind of change my perception to yeah. see what they're seeing. It's like it's almost like a visual kind of illusion. I don't know if you know that one with the the old lady and the young lady in one image. 
I don't know. Oh, yeah, and similar to the one where, like, you know, the dance is spinning one way for some people, but spinning the other way for the other person. Yes. And when you try and think of it the other way, does it start spinning? <laughs> yeah, way? yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that guy, that's a cutesy anime character for me. Oh, really? Interesting. That's what it reminds me of. Like, the whole thing is like some sort of cutesy anime. Oh. Like, one of those blocky, you yeah. know, the giant heads, the bobble head things, like one of those. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I know, well, I know what I see in that one, but maybe I won't mention it because it's boobs. I see boobs yeah. in that one. I don't usually see um, figures in them, which okay. is quite interesting because all my work is basically figures is quite figurative, right? And I, I focus quite a lot on, on the female nude. And yeah. um, surprisingly, with the ink blots, I hardly ever see figures. It's mostly yeah. rolls skulls, uh, a lot of, uh, sometimes flowers as well, which is quite nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, I like, I like the process. I like the conversation. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to me how, you know, everyone sees something different in them. I'm also really interested in like Jungian, uh, archetypes and, uh, yeah, what, what they represent, which is quite interesting. And do you think that it changed? Because I know when you were t showing me some of your other ink block, ink blocks, ink blots. Sorry, there are some that are obviously the standard black and white, and there are some in these kind of like pastely pink and purple colours. And it's interesting. I, I mean, I don't know anything about ink blots, so you'll have to be my expert here. But I was assumed they use black and white because black and white doesn't come loaded with your views. So like, whenever I see something like pink and purple. I'm immediately drawn to sort of floral motifs because I think, well, what's in those colours, you know, they're floral, they're generally seen as quite feminine colours, even though I tend to wear them quite a lot. You know, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those sorts of, that you kind of come in preconception or like yeah. blue would be calm or green would be envy or something. So I don't know if people see that differently when they see your black and white ones versus the other ones. That's interesting. I think I, I think color is just as subjective as kind of as imagery. Um, yeah, it's interesting that you see a lot of florals. You know, when when I look at the color ones, I see kind of quite fantastical creatures. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, I haven't really noticed a lot of difference in you know the kind of the the themes of what people see in the black and white versus the color ones. Um, it seems to be quite, you know, uniform across them both. Um, but that's interesting that you see kind of floral images, but also it's interesting that you chose the black and white one. Yeah, I think I chose the black and white one because I think it was more, I think it was one, it was more angular. I just tend to like more angular things. And it was also more, um, I suppose it also felt quite traditional in the sense that I think of like Rorschach tests and they're always black and white. Well, actually you say that, but uh, Rorschach, uh, he created a range of colour ones. Oh, OK, I didn't know. Maybe. I think there's only about 12 of the official, there's only 12 official ones, uh, 12 official ink blots, and he always used the same ones. And um, some of them are actually in colour. Ah. Um, which is quite interesting. I think he, I think he explained it as like he used different colours to kind of separate the forms from okay. one another, so they kind of stand out as separate entities. So I think that's what's interesting about the colour versus the black and white. Like the black and white ones tend to become like one kind of thing, um, whereas the colour ones, yeah. So I used kind of I used three layers actually. So this is a three layer ink blot. Right. So I'll start off with like a dark acrylic first mm -hmm. and then go lighter and lighter. Um, and the reason I've done this is to create this kind of three dimensional effect to try and create some depth. I think I see that character you're talking about. Are those the eyes? Yeah, those are the eyes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the mouth. Oh, that is so cute. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I wouldn't have seen it unless you pointed it out. But I can definitely see the breast now that you're, when you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the first thing that, like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Mm. I wish I had a picture of your inkblot before I actually painted it. Ah. Um, would you like to see it? 
Yes, I'd love to see what happened with my inkblot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I sent I sent I sent to Bish an inkblot, a black and white inkblot, and um, I asked him to kind of tell me what he saw in it, and he very kindly gave me quite a quite a, a detailed response, which was quite interesting and quite very different from what I was expecting, actually. That's good. Um, it was before I knew about your past. Yes. So yeah, for those, yeah, so my past is, I, well, I studied biomedical science at university and I specialized in anatomy. So I spent a lot of time dissecting dead bodies in my second and third year. Yeah. That's so interesting. So, so you, you have quite an attraction for like figurative art as well, don't you? Yeah, I don't know if it's ever translated into my art. People always ask me this and I'm never sure if it has or not. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, without further ado, so with the, I've, I've put this in a frame. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, let me just show you. Okay. Ah, so this that's is the cool. Piece. Yeah, and the horns and the skull. Now, it definitely feels like a sort of cow to me or an ox or something. Yeah, it's, it's an ox. Well, it's inspired by an ox. And I can see that the really, like, sort of skull on top. It almost feels like a child's skull. Ooh. Like small. Yeah, and creepy. I like creepy. It's fine. <laughs> um, and then, and when, and the floral stuff at the top, the blue. What's that in blue? Yeah, I, um, so before I actually start the painting, what I wanted to do with yours, which I, I hadn't done before, really, um, just to kind of help me plan it out, Properly. It was I created like a digital collage first. Ah, excellent. So that's the kind of collage. And those those things that you call the horns, they're actually like writing quills. quills. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, because what I saw in the ink blot was actually like the shadow, I saw feathers there. Yeah, okay. I thought that was quite might be quite nice to include because you know you're a writer and Mm, um, it's cool. really nice to kind of include that. Yeah, I um, should point out that I don't write with quills, but. <laughs> no, I don't write <laughs> right with like fingers on keyboards, probably. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, they well, use a pen. There's no school like the old school, right? No, definitely. Um, the floral thing, I just I like florals, but also, I mean, look at the shirt you're wearing, and I've seen you wear some pretty out there shirts, so. I do have a white shirt with blue flowers all over really? it. Really? So, yeah, yeah. I thought you'd appreciate the florals, so. Excellent. Try, yeah. I try and kind of, like, include, if I know the person, I'd obviously like to include, like, a little bit of them as much as I can, because, you know, it, it yeah. is all about them at the end of the day. Um, so that's oh, why I include those. Uh, um, those kind of floral elements. And, and also, um, you mentioned that you like um, yeah. Memento Mori uh, yeah. paintings, which yeah. I really love as well. Um, yeah, and I just, I, I just love, I love flowers in general. I just love paint, painting flowers. Mm -hmm. I like it. I love it. It looks great. Cool. Thanks. So, um, when I do the final pieces, so obviously, the, um, when I get funded, I'll be able to get like the like the proper material. So this canvas, it won't be so kind of, can you see it's quite crinkled there. So this will actually be uh, supported by like a um, like a tacky board, which it will be kind of stuck to. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, so it should be quite flat. But yeah, it's quite a nice little box frame as well. I can oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, it looks great. I think I love the idea of this whole concept of creating a work which is kind of part you part the artist yeah that's what i love about it as well like because you, you can't really you can't separate the artist from the artwork it's just not possible um but this way you know it's it's still very much about the viewer but obviously like i, I can put in like you know my own little what i like as well and, and i think that's key isn't it like when you buy a work so i'm thinking i was talking about the stories that i've told I think I recently told them on Instagram about my own art collection. And it's quite nice because there's the sort of story of how you know the artist and how you know their work and what the work says to you. But there's also kind of your own personal story of how you got to find out about the artist, how you bought the work. Was there any 
interesting interaction in buying the work. So I love the fact that when you've created a work, there is a part of me in there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And the fact that we know each other also helps because clearly you've got your own interpretation beyond just what I told you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, awesome. Ooh. So, um, so if you'd like, I can tell you a little bit about the symbolism. Yeah, I love that. What you saw. Um, I usually go on what people, the first thing people tell me. So I remember you said, um, oh, I see a skull. It could be a horse or an ox or even a, maybe a dragon. Yeah. Uh, so I always take like the first thing, even though I, I chose the ox, actually, um, just because I, I really I love the ox skull. I just think, and it actually that, 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 um, the shape that that particular ink blot made was very much uh, similar. It was very much an ox skull yeah. like had the kind of everything was in the right kind of place but in terms of the symbolism I mean I can look at the ox one as well actually I don't think it's in here but anyway so I chose the horse because that was the first thing that you kind of said that you saw um mm -hmm. so horses are symbols of freedom which yeah. is quite fitting for what we for lockdown <laughs> <laughs> so um, what they say is that this totem animal uh, is is talking about kind of new new journeys, new directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, discovering your own freedom and power. So I don't know. I don't know if you're like planning some adventure or probably cancelled most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's, it's the new adventure of what we do post as well, right? Yeah. Because I think we're all already starting to think about what we're going to start, how we're going to live our lives beyond this. Exactly. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people, you, you kind of, you can't, you can't plan anything right now because we don't know, you know, when things are going to go back to normal. So You can always fantasize, right? Oh, yeah. It's really about good. What you would do. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So here yeah, it's funny. Um, uh, it says, you must ask yourself, am I feeling constricted? <laughs> Do you need to move on or allow others to move on? Mm. Um, horse totem will teach you how to ride into new directions to awaken and discover your own freedom and power. Excellent. So I thought that was quite nice. Um, you also mentioned that you saw, um, I'm probably going to say this wrong, is it tree panning? Trepanning? Trepanning. Trepanning, yeah. Trepanning, sorry. Yeah. I do you know if that's the correct pronunciation, yeah, but it's the... It's the art of kind of alleviating pressure on the brain when they're swelling by drilling a hole into it. It used to be really common amongst sort of Egyptian times. That's what they used to do. Like you've got headaches. They would like drill a hole in your <laughs> skull because to relieve the pressure on your I brain. Have so many holes in my skull. <laughs> yeah, but apparently yeah. it is still used today, I think. I think even in like some, I don't know if I'm not au fait with accident and emergency rooms. But I do remember they're saying it sometimes is used in emergency situations when there's big swelling on the brain. Yeah, 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 to release to release the kind of pressure. But also I read that it, um, I don't know by which culture, but it was used somewhere to release negative spirits. Is that true? That would probably be right, yeah. They probably thought headaches were caused by negative spirits, right? Oh, that's like true. Brain. <laughs> if you open it up, they'll, they'll go free. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. How oh, interesting. Yeah, that, that really, I was, I was really um, um, fascinated by that. And that image that I actually chose is yeah. an actual image of a oh. skull. With, um, obviously, I've manipulated the eyes to make them a bit kind of sad. Yeah. You also mentioned the sad, sad skull eyes. Yeah. No, excellent. Yeah, because I did look at those holes when you first showed me. I was like, oh, they do look like trepanic holes now. Really? Yeah. Good created that that bit of depth um and the last thing i, I want to mention um uh, you mentioned the uh, mustache as well oh uh, yeah which i didn't really develop actually because i liked i kind of liked the transparency of it mm, yeah it's kind of like a dolly a bit like a dolly mustache yeah it's it? a bit like a like a thicker dolly isn't it yeah <laughs> a dolly with some volume yeah yeah, and moustaches apparently symbolise uh, assertive masculinity. 
Yeah, don't come more masculine than me, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that exhibition you saw with the... Uh... Did you see that one? The Barbican one? Yeah. The one. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, and that was interesting seeing all the yeah, different... Well, I suppose masculinity is changing, right? Well, the definition of it is. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, things like that will always change, I think. So I think there's probably a few, not with me, but there's probably quite a few lockdown moustaches growing. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a few men I've spoken to with with bushy beards now. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I won't say anything. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, basically what I want to do for this campaign, um, I'll be launching it uh, early next month. And what I hope to do, so basically I want to collaborate with kind of lovers of the human mind and the subconscious um, to create a series of hopefully 60 paintings. That's like my goal. Excellent. Um, they're 35 by 35 centimeters, so they're not too big. Um, and this will obviously be guided by their interpretation of an ink blot. Um, so it will start off with like a conversation, kind of like what we had, where I'll show them or I'll send them a picture of the ink blot and mm -hmm. then ask them to give me in as much detail as they can, like an interpretation of what they see. And then once I've got that information, I'll create a digital collage and then I will reinterpret it using oil paints, using layers of oil paint. Um, yeah, so what else can I say? <laughs> um, will there be different options for people in Kickstarter or will it just be like you one painting or? Yeah, so there'll be different rewards. Mm. So the, the the main one will obviously be the um, this kind of this kind of size painting. Yeah. And um, so along with that, I'm I'm hoping to create a kind of book of ink, ink blots as well. So I'll have like a before and after, so people can see how it's been developed. And I might include some quotes from participants as well, just because I think it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'll do there. And then I will create, there'll be an opportunity for people to go bigger if they want. So I'll have one option that's like 60 centimeters and then the biggest one, which will be 85. Wow. So, um, yeah, I hope, I hope some people um, choose that one because I think it would be pretty epic. Um, yeah. I do have some that are quite big actually that I worked on um, mm -hmm. during my great art residency. And would you only ever do individuals? What do you mean? So like if somebody, like let's say a couple or a family wanted their own interpretations of an ink blot, would you like layer them on top or do you think it should always be one of one? I think it would be better one on one. Okay. I think it would just become too complex if there were like, you know, a whole family of people interpreting this. Can you imagine? <laughs> might get a little bit uh, complex. I mean, yeah. it's, probably, it's not impossible, but it yeah. might get To be complex. fair, a family could always ask for four of them, right? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm up for that. I'm up for then that. Then they can have their family portrait of all four, <laughs> or a couple can have their his and hers. Oh. That would be really interesting, actually. And they look great, like, if there's more than one, to be honest. So, um, yeah, that, that would actually be quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, a couple therapy via yeah. Parts. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite excited about it. It's the first time oh, I've sure. done anything like this. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think I really like the idea. Like I said before, I love the idea of, you know, people being within the artwork that they own or an element of themselves being within an artwork that they own. And also <laughs> that whole sort of, you know, like you said earlier, what you see in something actually tells you more about yourself than it does about anything else, right? Than the actual work itself. Oh and yeah. yeah. I've always been an advocate to say that, you know, the whole point of art once it's created is that it is purely subjective, right? Because an artist can mean one thing when they make a work and somebody can read it completely differently. Oh right? yeah, definitely. It's very subjective and and as you say, like, you know, once you create an artwork, it's, 
it's kind of not yours anymore and it becomes open to interpretation basically yeah. um which has always been weird like I've, I've always tried to you know in my work i've always tried to have some kind of message or meaning and i'm always trying to like confront the viewer in some way and it hasn't really worked the way i wanted it to because people don't see what i'm trying to say they don't see what i'm seeing they're seeing what they see right yeah. which is quite interesting at uni because I was, I was creating you know i was a bit of an angry feminist in my uh, university days and I was creating this work where the whole intention of the work was to confront the gaze of the viewer, which right. was pre-supposedly male, okay? So um, I created these very kind of strong, powerful, nude uh, female figures, and they would either be like staring like directly at the viewer, mm -hmm. or they'd be kind of looking down at the viewer, they were quite huge paintings. They were like, uh, I think the biggest one was like two, no, the biggest one was actually three meters long. It was like a, a corner painting. But anyway, um, but when I, when I asked people what they thought about it afterwards, you know, they couldn't tell me why, but they said they just, they felt incredibly kind of uneasy. And I was like, good, that was my intention. <laughs> yeah. So, but this way it's just, it's, it's so much nicer because um, it's, it's, it's inclusive. It's more inclusive. I'm trying to include, you know, I'm trying to include the viewer in my work. I want them to kind of, I want people to see themselves in the pieces, you know? Yeah. No, I think that's great. I think people, I think people, well, we'll see what, how people react, but I hope people will buy into it. because It's a great idea to have sort of contribute to an artwork. And like, you know, like the reason open studios are so popular is people like seeing behind the scenes of how the magic, as it were, how the magic happens, right? How you, an artist makes an artwork. Well, here you're actually part of it. So it's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I, I'm, I'm excited to um, connect with people in this way as well. I think it's, it's just completely different. You know, I've never, I've never seen anything, you know, done in this way before. So... Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping yeah. it will be a, a success. Excellent. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you. And I love you my work but as well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, awesome. Thanks, Tabish. Thanks for, yeah. um, thanks for taking the time to uh, do this little interview with me. Um, it really means a lot to me. Thank you. And thank you for letting me be the guinea pig for <laughs> this process. You're very welcome. <laughs> Or the, the trailblazer, let's use that instead. Yes. <laughs> the trailblazer. Yes. I love that word. Yeah. Trailblazers. Let's do it. <laughs>